All right, so uh, let's take a look at homework, see how we do it. So a few things, guys and girls. Um, we as a nation, I, we have obviously a huge election that just took place. Now, whether you say you are for or against it, it's fantastic. Here's the thing. You have the right to vote in this country. So when you get to the point of voting, make sure you vote. Okay? And I know that you're not there. And, you know, some people want to say, oh, yeah, but it's this and this and this. One thing that you have to realize that you have to do as a voter when you become a voter is propaganda on TV. Yeah, anytime you see a political ad on TV, it has nothing to do with what that person has. So please be very cautious because, you know, I don't know if I want our nation to make a decision on a president or a senator or a governor or anything like that because of a political ad on TV. I had posted something on Facebook a while back just stating, you know, a blanket statement saying, have any of you been influenced the way you vote by reading something on Facebook, Twitter, or any other social media? If so, unadd me as a friend. Ooh. Yeah. I had people going like that. Well, I had people going, yeah, but you don't know. Yeah, I do know. Because I research things for my vote. Because my vote, I want to count. But, unfortunately, too many people think, oh, if it's on the internet, if it's on TV, if it's anywhere else, it's got to be true. So... And the hard thing is, unfortunately, you have had, we've all been subjected to ads on TV. If you watch any type of television that's on a regular broadcast, um, that's why I'm such a big fan of Netflix. Just watch the shows and you know, commercials. But don't worry, we'll get to watch those commercials again that are talking about Viagra and uh, other things like that now. So, so yeah, it is what it is. So, um, I would just, I, I just want to caution you all that when you do become the age of voting, research what you're voting, and if something that comes to you in the mail, something comes to you on social media, somebody comes knocking on your door, somebody meets you at the grocery store or the mall, somebody puts a sign in their yard, talk about it, okay? Ask about it. The, yeah, but this person, yeah, but this person. I have a degree in math. So that means I have a very logical progression of thought. And somebody who's influenced or swayed by <coughs> propaganda saddens me. Because we should be a relatively educated nation. And unfortunately, we're not. So... Um, Take a look at, you know, what are the issues? You know, obviously, we live in the greatest country in the world. So some of you are, you know, this country is. Yeah, you're right. But how do I look at this country? I look at it this way. I'm pretty damn happy to be who I am. I love what I do. I have two great daughters. And my house is paid for and been paid for since I was age 40. So is America pretty crappy for me? I don't have a mortgage. Think of that. And I've been told by people, oh, you're dumb not to have a mortgage. Oh, why is that? Because you can write it off. No. The $1,500 a month mortgage payment I could have, I invest into tax shelters and invest in my future and my kids' future. Yeah, but that's dumb. Yeah, saving money's dumb. You're right. And that was a conversation I had with my father, who still has a mortgage. So, I had a buddy in Arizona who told me, he goes, well, you probably live in a pretty cruddy house. Um, I have an acre a lot of land in Littleton, horse privileges. Really? Yeah. Horse rights. 
Yeah. I don't have one. But, but when people say, oh, you probably have a cruddy house. Really? I could have horsies. My neighbors do. I mean, seriously, it's like. <laughs> so when people say, I would live, live, probably live in a cruddy house if it's already paid for. Okay. My buddy in Arizona, if he sneezes, his neighbor three houses away hears him. So that's how close his house is to his neighbor. So he's the one who's telling me that my house must be crappy. So, you know, I just, just say, just trying to point out, you know, my life. So am I happy, sad, content? Hey, I love the election, election process. And it makes us the greatest country in the world because you don't want to live in a country that a political agenda is forced upon you nonstop. If you don't like how something's done, vote. And please vote. And vote educated. Don't vote because you saw a commercial that. Don't be like my Aunt Diane. She's the one that you have to have two ways out of any place, any family gathering. A window and a door, two ways out of a room. Because you don't want her to talk to her. Your intelligence will just float out the window. You'd be like, oh, I'm getting dumber. Because her conversations are, well, I saw it today on Oprah. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Oprah, but if you're getting your conversational material available so for someone you haven't seen in 10 years from Oprah. Donald Trump did what? I did it wrong because I think that's what Oprah is. I agree. I mean, that's, Oprah's smart. I'm going to do some time for her. Oprah's, she's the richest no, woman in the world. I'm going to do some time for She's doing some right. Or at least the United States. It she might be the world. Yeah, heck yeah. Well, I agree with you. All right. The cost function. That's problem number one. The cost function, C at X. And I, a lot of you look like you had worked this out. Let's make sure you did it right. And I know the answers were available if you found them. So the very first problem is we have this cost function. So we talked about yesterday that this, this is the same thing as basically this just rearranged, and they have put this in functional notation. Correct? These mean the same thing. So don't, don't be frightened of functional notation. It means the exact same thing as what this is, which is this. You can graph it. Cross the y-axis at 0, 4, 50. You have a slope going up 3, right 1. Okay? But then it says determine. So this is the cost function. Answer the question below. The function calculates the cost in dollars of producing candles. Okay. So determine C at 50. So what do you think C at 50 means in the context of this problem? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to make 50 candles. Okay. This is the equation that costs to make candles. Okay. So I have 450 plus 3 times 50. What was right here? X. What did I replace X with? 50. And 50 in this case is representing the candles. So let's look at this. So you get this, I think, which is this, which this leads me to this point. Okay? So the cost of 50 candles is $600 or 600 pennies or 600 dimes or whatever. Our thing is, okay? So interpret C at 50 in the context of the problem. If I make 50 candles with this particular equation, it costs me $600. Make sense? That's a business thing. Determine the output, the output of the function when the input is 100. Well, the input is this. And this gives me the output. Input, output. Does it feel okay? Determine the output. Determine the output. So this is the output of a function when the input is 100. So what do you feel I should do with 100? Determine the output when the input is 100. What should I do with the 100? Yeah, it's the same thing. I'm going to plug 100 in rather than x, and I'm going to get 450 plus 
what was here in this problem? Dx. It was an x, but I'm going to plug 100 in here now. So do the math, 450 ah, plus 300. Sorry about the goofy looking zero. 750. 750. So in the context of the problem, if I were to make 100 candles, it would cost my company $750 in whatever. Wait, why does it only cost hundreds of dollars to make 100 candles and then just double it for It's because we have this 450. So this is like, what is this 450? Anyone know? What does this 450 mean in the context of the problem? It's like a flat fee. Price yeah, it's a flat fee. So I had to go to the store or call my distributor or whomever gives me my candle stuff. But in order for me to say, okay, we're going to start making candles today, like I have to order $450 worth of materials. Have you produced one candle yet? No. But in order for you to get to the point that you can start making candles, you had to pay in $450. Do companies have to pay money in order to get their products out? Or yes. do the McDonald's get built for free, and then all the food comes for free, and they just start selling it and secure profit? No, they have to pay for it. They have to buy the land. They have to pay for the building to be constructed. They have to buy the rights from McDonald's, the franchise rights. And then why does McDonald's taste the same if you have it here in Colorado versus in New Jersey or same wherever? Ingredients. Yeah, same ingredients. They're getting their stuff from the exact same factory. So someone doesn't open a McDonald's going, you know what? We're going to start selling fish tacos. Oh, I love fish tacos. I won't eat them here. We're too far from the ocean. So when people say, oh, it's fresh sushi. We're a two-day drive from any ocean. There's nothing about fresh fish. Huh? For any fr how? According to them, it's fresh? Well, no, you can freeze it and then you can eat it. That's not fresh. That's not fresh. That's all I can So when I eat seafood, this is how I like to eat seafood. I look to look. I like to look out over the water, going, "This just came out of there." That's how I like eating it. I would not like that. I like catching flounder off Jersey Shore. Oh, I used to live in San Diego, and it tastes the same. Oh, if you go to a uh, which restaurants are you going to? Yeah, is it a chain restaurant? I guarantee you, stuff that close to the ocean that comes from a fresh fish market is not as fresh, is more fresh than what it is here. Uh, some called preservatives takes place. Heck yeah! Heck yeah! Yeah, I have no problem with that. So, interpret the y intercept. The y intercept and the slope in the context of this problem. So we've already talked about it. So the y intercept is what in this problem? The flat fee. It's the flat fee. So the y intercept is 0, 450 as a point. So that's your flat fee. That is your initial fee in order to purchase it. Right? Okay. And this, the y-intercept is a point, so I like to list it as a point. We saw yesterday on the notes that it's important if you realize it's a point, then you start realizing, oh, there's my b-value, and it happens. Not, not if it's not. Um, where am I at? Come on. Oh, slope. What's our slope in this problem? Three. Three. Good. It's not three x. It's just the three. Okay, so the slope in the context of this problem, let's see. So the slope in the context of this problem, for every candle you create, you have to spend, no, no, I take it back, let me see, how do you mean? Three bucks for every candle. You're, yeah, you will make three dollars for every one candle you sell. Yeah. Does that make sense? That's sure. trash. That's well, if you make 10,000 candles, it's not a bad day, right? If you were able to sell them. Yeah. Well, if you made them and you only get 
<laughs> Biggest profit place I ever worked for. Biggest profit place I ever worked for. It was a, called Carousel Car Wash. It was a car wash in Arizona. The cost that it costed for the most expensive $15 car wash, which this is back in the 80s, so the $15 car wash, which got you all the fun, shiny stuff, cost 54 cents, and that included labor. Is that a good amount of profit for that company? $14.50 profit for every car wash? Oh, That's not oh, a good yeah. profit? Wait, what? Oh, Why yeah. is it $14.54? 54 cents, it cost man hours and chemicals and water to wash a car. Oh, I thought you, you said 54 oh, cents for the whole thing. Yeah. No, $15 was our big car wash package back in the 80s. But you only paid 54 cents. That's how much it cost you to pay oh, your people. God, that is so good. So for your person to walk up to the car, hi, would you like the ultimate car wash today? That person is getting paid. The next person is vacuuming out the car, and the person on the other side is vacuuming out the car. Another person loaded the car onto the conveyor belt. Three other people either scrubbed the front of the car or did the wheels and prepped it before it went through the machine. As it went through the machine, the water, the soap, the waxes, and then the blow dryer and the electricity that the blow dryer uses in the car wash comes out. Guy drives it off the rack. Two guys are at the other end, drying it off. One gets inside the car, starts wiping all the doing the windows, all blah, 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 blah. You know, 54 cents is what it cost the company. Uh, okay. Think about that. Oh, geez. So you're making so, about 14 and a half bucks for every time someone sells that car wash. Wait, so how many times did you sell that car wash? Oh, I used to sell it all the time. Oh. All the time. It was fantastic. Got commission off of it, too. Good. Yeah. There was the $6 wash, and that cost about 40 cents. So you still, you had a bigger profit margin on the higher end car wash, but the lower end car wash still had a wonderful profit as well. $6. $6 for the car wash, but it costed them 40 cents. Yeah. Just saying. I mean, that's a good business model. You're making good money. Um... So number four, number four says, determine the number of candles produced if the total cost of producing those candles was $1,950. So we have this $1,950, this $1,950. What, what am I trying to figure out? What is X in this context of this problem? No. Of yeah, that's a, X is the number of candles. Number of candle. I can spell candles, right? I was going to put candies. Um, number of candles. So if, if you had, at the end of the day, you go to your register and you're like, oh, wow, there's $1,950 here. Okay, whether it's good or bad, I don't know. But what does that mean? How would I plug $1,950 in for X? To figure out how many candles I had to make, you plug it in for C. You'd C at C at X. So this is where this gets plugged in. Wait, so would it get plugged in for the C or the X? It gets plugged in for the whole thing. This whole thing is C at X. Oh. Okay, so 1950 equals 450. Is that plus 3X? Is that what it was? Yeah. Plus 3X? Okay, so this is a simple problem. This is going to tell us how many candles we would have to make in order to get this $1,950. Okay, so let's see. Subtract $450, right? So what, is that $1,500? And that's 3x. So if I divide each side by 3, 500. So you have to make 500. You have to have 500 candles sold to make that kind of profit. Hopefully you sell other things in your shop. Is that a profit? Or a cost. Or is it just That's the cost. Revenue? That's the cost. So if you had spent, because it, it, it cost you $3 per candle to make, because this is a cost thing, it's not a profit. So in, if you spent $1,950, you had to make 500 candles in order to spend that much money. Make but, it but, but we don't have a profit thing here in this problem. It's just, that's the cost of your company. Um, okay, 
An employee claims, shh, an employee claims that 200 candles would be made at a total of $1,000. Does the employee's claim make sense? Okay, so this employee claims that if 200 candles were made, there would be a cost of $1,000. So remember, our equation, our equation is this. Okay, so let me ask you all this. So this is, this is the claim, that 200 candles would cost $1,000. That's the claim this employee says. How do we justify if this is correct or not? Okay, so what, which value is this and which value is this in this equation? The 200 is which value? The x. So this must be c at x, yeah. which is the same thing as y, correct? So I can do this. Is this equal to this? So that's 450 plus 600 is 400 plus 450 plus 600, 1,000. That's 1,050. It comes out to 1,050. Is the claim the employee made true? No. No. Yeah. Didn't you just plug in the 200? Yeah, I just plugged in the 200. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I could have plugged this 200 in right here, which technically goes right here. So you can add C at 200 is equal to 450 plus 3 times 200. And that would have told you that it would have came to 1050, which the one that would have meant that that claim was false. Did you have to plug it in for both? Well, I was just trying to see if it was a true statement or not, so I plugged it in for both. No, just the 200. Did you have to plug it in for CX and Okay, X? so that's a great question. So let's, let's bring this down. Let's come down a little bit further. This is my equation, right? So I can do one of two things. And we said we had, what was it? I forget. 200 comma 1,000. Right? So we want, this is some claim that this employee is making. So I can do it a couple of ways. If this is x and this is c at x, I could plug in what I just did here and see if this is true or false. Or I could have done this. And solved for x. And if I solve for x, if x is equal to 200, that would give me a true or false answer. Or I could have done c at x is equal to 450 plus 3 times 200. And if C at X, once I had gotten to my very end, came out to 1,000, that would have been a true or false. So there's a number of ways you could have done this. You could have plugged in both the C at X value, the cost value, and the X value. See how it's true or false. You could have just plugged in the X value, which was the 200 to see if it worked. I could have substituted in C at X, which is 1,000, to see if that was true. But I will tell you that no matter which one you picked, you would have found you would have had false on any of them. Okay, so which is the right way to do it? The way that your mind works. Which way is that? Probably the right way. Then they want to, <coughs> excuse me, then they want us to figure out C at 75 and C at 2000. So again, our cost equation is this. 450 plus 3x, right? So where, what am I plugging in? Where does 75 get plugged in? So this becomes C at 75. So what am I substituting in? What was right here? What was? X. X. What's going there? 75. Let's do the other one real quick before we work out. C at 2,000. I get 450 plus 3. What was here? X. What's going there? 2,000. Okay, 
So do your arithmetic. There's 150, what is that, 4? 225? Is it 225? I think. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I think so. All right, so that's uh, 675. Okay, so if you made 75 candles, it cost your company 675 bucks. If I did this one, 450, that's 6,000. Uh, 6,450. So the cost, it would, if you were to make 2,000 candles, it would cost your company $6,450, in which hopefully you sell it for a higher price so you can make a profit. Right? If y equals 1,650, determine x, the number of candles produced. So if we're saying y equals 1,650, which value am I plugging in 1550 in for? The y value. The y value is the same as what value? C at x. Okay? So this here is the same thing as y. So I can plug 1650 in and solve it. Subtract 450, that becomes 1200 over here. Divide by 3. So it would cost me, and I have to make 400 candles in order for it to cost me that much. Okay? So is there a lot to these problems? So think about it. However your problem is written, if your problem is like this, that's the same thing as me stating this. It means the same. One's in functional notation, one's not. Sometimes I need to plug in, so sometimes you need to plug in for x, and sometimes you need to plug in for f at x, which is the same thing as y. Okay? Number eight. go to the college student story problem. College student works part-time as a waitress for a catering company. Yeah, you could find those answers pretty easily. She is paid one-time amount for travel expenses to get to the location of the event that is being catered. The function is F at T is equal to 18T plus 15 determines the amount of money she has paid working T hours at one event. Use this information. So this waitress, they have this equation, F at T. What's that? But it's, it's for a catering thing, right? So it's not like this person is a waitress just over there at that pancake house where they're going to the same location. So this waitress gets a job. Her company is going to give $15, like if she shows up at the job and says, I go home, we don't need you. That person's getting paid 15 bucks. Okay? And then they're going to get paid 18 bucks an hour to be this waiter or waitress. Okay? So they're probably not going to get tips because it's a catered event. Does that make sense? Waitresses normally don't make this much this kind of hourly income because they work based on tips. Hmm. Don't get me started on tips. Woo, man. All I'll say is do not ever form an opinion about tips until you are a waiter or a waitress at a restaurant. Right now, no. I, I was. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh. Well, I worked at a restaurant that the owner said flat out if you don't, if, they put on their window, if you have bad service, you're expected to pay 10% in tip. If you get service you expect, 15%. If you have great service and above and beyond, up to 20% tip. If you don't believe in this, do not attend our restaurant. We had a line out the door every Friday and Saturday night. We had wait times of three to four hours. 
So when people are like, oh, people wouldn't come. Pretty sure a line to three or four hours for Nello's Pizza. <clears throat> oh, it was amazing pizza. Deep was dish Chicago Arizona? style pizza. You what? Was it in Arizona? Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. But I mean, our owners flat out, if you got stiffed on a tip, the owners would walk up to the people. Was there a problem with service? No, it was great. Did you forget to put a tip? Oh, we don't believe in tipping. This is my card. This is the owner saying to the people. This is my card. You are never allowed in my establishment ever again. You show up again, I will have you cited for trespassing. Oh, yeah. shoot. So when people say, oh, tipping's optional. There's a lot of right. If you stiff people at tips and you are regular showing up and you're stiffing them, that restaurant will say you are no longer because you know that sign that says we refuse to the right to refuse we we reserve oh. the right to refuse service to anyone. Guess who the anyone is? Yeah. And I tell you what, it was a great place to work. I loved it, and it was good pizza. Woo. Wait, was the owner nice? Oh, he's fantastic. Oh, cool. oh, yeah. I was expecting him to be like No, he's the greatest guy in the world. Sure. His great family. I was actually roommates with their daughter in college. Oh. And she, I mean, we weren't dating. She had her room and bathroom, and I had my room and bathroom, and we just shared an apartment. She's a great person. But it was a great company to work for. Man, it was great. <clears throat> now they sold it. It's an unplay. <laughs> they retired. They sold it for ridiculous money and retired. All right, so um, <coughs> calculate calculate f at 7 and interpret that in the context of the problem. So what is this going to do? What do I do with the problem? Here's our original function. What's the f at 7 going to do? It's going to plug into the um, y and the x. So notice this replaced what value there? The t. The t. It's also going to replace it right here. I don't have a calculator. Someone do 18 times 7. I don't know. It's 126. 126? John. Is that 126 plus 15? Yeah. Okay. And so. 141. 141. Okay. So let's. So this yields me the point 7, 141. So what does this mean in the context of the problem? What would you think? Plug in 7 in for t. What do you think t would represent in this problem? f at t equals 18t plus 15. The waitress get 15 bucks just to go to the establishment. What do you think the t would mean in the context of this problem? Hours worked. How much? Hours worked. Hours worked, yeah. Is that what you're going to say, Rob? Oh, okay. Yeah, buddy. So what does the f at 7 mean in the context of this problem? Yes, seven hours worked and earned how much? $141. Okay, so this this was a pretty long shift for somebody who worked seven hours as a waitress, but it could happen. So this particular establishment said, hey, you are the waitress or the waiter or the wait staff or however you want to call them. Because they know the value of your time, and sometimes it might take you a little longer to get there, they're going to give you 15 bucks just to show up whether you work or not. But if you happen to work, you're going to give you $18. If I get the hiccups, for the hiccups, they're going to give you 18 bucks. Okay? Interpret the slope and the y-intercept. So this is the y-intercept, which is 0, 15. Agree? So how do I interpret the y-intercept in the context of this problem? What does it mean? The flat. the flat fee. You company says, hey, we need you to work. And you're like, sweet. And you're driving out there, going to have my job. You get out there, walk in. You know what? The first thing you're supposed to work for came. Here's 15 bucks. Sorry for wasting your time. So now you're walking out going, sweet, you got 15 bucks, man. I'm going to hit the Starbucks, go to the McDonald's. I don't know. I know 15 is not an enormous amount of money, but I'm just trying to present it to you. 
So for this person just to be, you know, show up to the job, whether they worked or not, they're getting $15 minimum. So what's my slope in this problem? What's my slope? 18. Yeah, 18 is my slope. So I could put the 18 over 1 because slope is normally a fraction. And the slope in the context of this problem means for every hour worked, $18 more is given. So if you work one hour, you can get $18. You work two hours, you get two times 18. You work three hours, you get three times 18, plus the original 15 bucks. Well, I mean, it, no, it, it, it's a fine amount. I wouldn't say that's your living wage. I know you, you all will get more than that later in life, but you know, some of you are coming up on a time where you might start looking at your first job, right? You might. And your first job isn't necessarily your career. It could be, I guess. My, my very first job, my job at 15, well, my, my first job was working with my dad with the drapery and vertical and mini blind business. And I made, used to make mini blinds and verticals. You want to talk about it? Oh, sucked. Oh, I hated it. And my dad would be like, hey, we're going to go down to the office today to work. You want to go? No. Yeah, come on. I'll buy you lunch. And then I get like 20 bucks for the whole day plus lunch. I'm like, oh, that sucks. But I was like 10, so I guess it was righteous boxing. But then my second job after that is I worked for Chapman Chevrolet, Chevy dealership. You guys want to know what I did? I put black tar paint on the underside of a car. This was per to prevent the car from rusting. Okay? Now, here's the funny thing. This is in Arizona. It doesn't snow in Arizona. When the rain comes out of the sky, it's just rain. So guess what's not going to rust in Arizona? Your car. So I was underneath. I'd lift the car up on a hoist, and I'd paint the bottom of it, paint everything that's not going to catch on fire. You didn't want to paint the exhaust, the manifold, the bottom of the engine block. You didn't want to paint the oil pan. Why did the tar get onto your face? Oh, no. I had a big old respirator on. I was like in this Gumby-looking outfit. It came over. I had goggles on, a respirator on. I thought you were cleaning just for your skin. No. I had gloves on, they come up to here, boots on, and paint the other side of the car. Dropped a Suburban off the hoist one time. Yeah, you only let that happen once, though. Dang, hoist, the hoist arm broke. So there, I got and lifted it up, so hoist is, you know, the thing that comes out of the ground. Yeah, it's a so I get the Suburban up, got the things taped off that are going to tape. Go over to my thing, and I hear, bang, boom! Suburban's like that in the bay, I'm like, <laughs> Boss comes in, Ruben Nunez. Hey, white boy! That's what they called me. I don't know why. <laughs> what? You okay? Yeah. What happened? Suburban fell off the hoist. What don't happen? How? I'm 15. I have no idea how the hell it fell. <laughs> Turned out that the arm like let go. The arm that was bolted on, the bolts snapped. And so they deemed it. It wasn't my fault. But then they're like, well, why didn't you check the bolts? I'm like, I didn't know it was my job to check the bolts. I just wanted to paint the bottom of this car. Yeah, that was my that was my stuff. All right. Um, the waitress earned. The waitress earned 105 bucks. The waitress. Earned $105 using this equation. How many hours did this person work? Well, where's the hours up here? Which, vet, which value up there is the hours? T. T. These are my hours. So how do I figure out how many hours this waitress worked? Plug. Plug. Where does 105 get plugged in? Yeah, it gets plugged in right there for the whole thing. So this becomes 105 equals 18t plus 15. So t tells us the number of hours. So I'm going to subtract 15. So I believe that's 90. Is that right? Yeah. And then if I divide each side by 18, I found that this waitress worked five hours. 
So the waitress worked five hours, got 105 bucks. Is it good? I don't know. That's what she made or he made. That's pretty good. Sure. The waitress never works more than 12 hours at any event. This being the case, state the domain and range of the function. Oh, sweet. Domain and range. Okay, so let's review. What do we know? And I know I'm not going to get done with this. Domain is what? Which value? The x value. And the range is what? The y value. Okay? So they said that this person will can't work any more than 12 hours. That's the max. Okay? So on our, on our x, y axis, you have a zero here all the way out to 12 out here. What's in between? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Make sense? These are hours. Okay? The range. What's the minimum amount of money this waitress will work? Or will make? 15. 15. So it starts at this $15. Okay? How, how much can this person make? It was what? Don't worry about turning in homework right now. It'll be all right. Just turn next time. So what am I going to do with the 12? I'm going to plug 12 in here. 12 goes in here. 18 times 12. Come on, get me real quick. 18 times 12 is what? Help me. Uh, 96. 96? No? Yeah, it is. 96. 12 times 18 is 96? 18. 18 times 12 is what? Come on! Got a phone there with a calculator. Let's do it. We're not leaving until we get this. 160? I don't know. 216. 216. 216. And I add 15 to that, I get to 231. So my maximum range is 231. So this graph kind of looks like this. So my domain goes from 0 to 12 hours. My range goes from 15, because that's the minimum this person makes, to $231. Guys and girls, let's make sure that the page 115 is done. That was the third page of this. Get it done. See you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Make sure you get the Schoology done. Friday.